Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by and seeing what I'm up to. My name is Silky Feather and you are at Silky Feather's Nest, the Audible Book Club. Unfuck Your Habitat, You're Better Than Your Mess by Rachel Hoffman, read by Emily Wu Zeller. <coughs> <coughs> Dear me, excuse me, here we go. ...or watch TV and get up and do something, anything. If you have the motivation but lack the ability, you have to figure out how to work with or around any limitations that have prevented you from doing this in the past. Unfuck Your Habitat, or UFYH, is all about helping you do just that. It's about lighting a gentle fire under our asses and reminding ourselves that we deserve a home we can be comfortable in and proud of. It's about acquiring the skills we lack and applying those skills in our everyday lives in a way that results in improvement without burnout. It's about celebrating every success, no matter how small it might seem at the time. Because when we accomplish something, especially something that seemed impossible, it feels pretty awesome. Who needs Unfuck Your Habitat? So many different kinds of people have been fed by <coughs> traditional housekeeping and organizational systems. In fact, I'd be willing to bet that close to an entire generation has entered adulthood without the skills needed to keep a clean and organized home. Skills that previous generations took for granted. Whereas in the stereotypical nuclear family of the past, one of the parents, usually the mother, would teach housekeeping skills to the next generation, usually the daughters. The realities of life today don't make this a feasible, realistic, or a desirable scenario. The definition of family is evolving all the time, but that archaic mindset regarding housekeeping roles hasn't changed much at all. As a result, many domestic skills have fallen by the wayside due to lack of time, shifting priorities, or inadequate tools. As we move past traditional roles within the home into structures that better fit how we actually live our lives, we also need to adapt our methods for keeping our homes running smoothly. As a society, we haven't yet caught up to that reality. So we've lost a whole lot of our ability to get the job done while we've been looking around wondering whose job it is. Traditional housekeeping systems attempt to make people's lives fit into a rigid structure of routines and schedules for cleaning and maintaining the house. And that doesn't make any sense at all for a lot of people. Doesn't it make more sense to fit your cleaning routines around your life instead? Today, it's critical to incorporate flexible routines that work with your life instead of against it. Otherwise, nothing will ever get done. Trying to use a housekeeping system that was developed for someone with a very different lifestyle is a little like wearing shoes that are two sizes too small. It's uncomfortable. It's awkward. And pretty soon, you're going to get frustrated and give up entirely, left feeling much worse than when you started. So maybe it's time to try something completely different. Something that was designed to work for people who are failed by other systems, and that recognizes that you have a whole lot of other shit going on. So, who needs Unfuck Your Habitat? Everyone, regardless of gender. With all the different living situations that we enjoy today, assigning housekeeping tasks based on archaic and outdated gender roles just doesn't make sense. Traditional standards of who should be doing the cleaning don't apply to how people live their lives nowadays, and haven't for quite some time. Households are made up of every combination of gender, age, and relationship. If you live somewhere, you deserve for that place to be nice and clean and livable. And you should be the one who makes it that way. If several people are responsible for making the mess, each of those people is responsible for getting it clean and under control. It doesn't matter who you are or what box or boxes you check. Gender roles as they relate to cleaning are bullshit. And just offer a handy excuse for half the population to be lazy and the other half to feel guilty. Busy people. We're all busy. Very busy, in fact. Almost all of us have stuff going on that takes up a vast majority of our time, whether it's work, school, family obligations, or anything else. 
It doesn't make sense for us to follow a bunch of steps that were developed for people who have hours each day to devote to cleaning and organizing their home. Who actually has that? No one I know. Even the people I know who are home all day, whether they work at home or are stay-at-home parents, don't have time for the type of strict structure outlined by traditional systems because they're busy doing the million little things necessary for keeping the rest of their lives running smoothly. To be honest, cleaning and organizing the house falls so far down on the list of things to do that it often falls off that list entirely. We haven't adapted how we look at housekeeping to reflect how we really live our lives. And that's why so many of us feel like we're failing at it. With UFYH, you'll learn how to change the way cleaning and other home-related tasks fit into your life and be able to adapt and adjust to whatever life throws at you at any given time. People too broke to have a full-time maid. So, you. One of the other things that most organizational and cleaning systems have in common is that they tend to require a significant investment, either of money or of time. And if you're like most other people these days, you don't exactly have a surplus of either one. Any free time or extra money is almost immediately earmarked for something else, something that's more important or possibly more fun. So you may find yourself wondering if it's even possible to get your shit under control if you can't spend a ton of money or every waking moment dealing with your mess, because everything you're hearing sure makes it seem like it's not. It is possible, and UFYH will show you how. There's no reason that getting your home in order should drain your bank account or your energy reserves. Anyone with physical or mental illnesses or disabilities. Many people come to UFYH because they can't find a place for themselves in the expectations of other systems. For example, people with mental or physical illnesses or limitations often find that massive cleaning sessions or inflexible schedules involving intense bursts of work just aren't physically possible. It's not about being lazy. It's about not being able to accomplish what ends up being a bunch of impossible tasks because of factors that are entirely beyond your control. The underlying assumption about people's ability to do housework seems to be that everyone is able-bodied with plenty of energy to spare. That assumption can be pretty damaging because everyone who doesn't fit into that tiny little box simply gets left behind. UFYH realizes that not everyone fits this mold, and will help show you how to work within or around whatever your limitations may be. People on their own for the first time. Young adults in their first living situation away from their parents, whether that's a dorm, apartment, or shared housing of any kind, often find themselves at a loss as far as what to do, how to do it, and when it should be done when it comes to housework. And if you grew up in an environment where you didn't learn these skills, either because your parents weren't good at keeping a house, or because they did it all for you and never made you learn, being out on your own can be a bit of a startling wake-up call. There's nothing inherently wrong with not knowing what to do around the house, but the skills needed have to be learned at some point. And the longer you wait, the more difficult it can be. Lazy people. Then there are some of us who actually are lazy. <coughs> and that's totally fine. We all have a lot going on in our lives. And when faced with a little bit of downtime, it's totally understandable that the last thing you feel like doing is housework. I mean, doing the dishes takes a lot of energy. And it's not fun at all. So it's really no wonder that so many people choose to just succumb to the inclination to sit down and do nothing. The problem with this is that... Well, how stuff needs to happen at some point. If you let it go forever because you just don't feel like it, your house is quickly going to become, and stay, a messy disaster. So while laziness is a completely understandable reason not to work on getting your home in order, you need to get past it for even just a short amount of time. And then you can go back to doing whatever it is you'd prefer to be doing, even if that happens to be nothing at all. Perfectionists. It seems counterintuitive, but some people who identify as perfectionists tend to have trouble keeping their home in order. Because it's so difficult to clean and organize everything thoroughly and perfectly all at once, perfectionists can get discouraged by what seems like a lack of results and just give up. 
Learning that progress is incremental and not necessarily flawless can be a huge step toward getting a messy house under control a little bit at a time. There's no end to the reasons that people don't or can't clean their home. Thanks everyone for stopping by and hanging out with me, Silky Feather, here at the nest. Oh, I'm all so cozy as the weed whacker is whacking some weeds. <laughs> you have a great day. Please be kind to one another. This is Silky Feather signing off. Please do hit that like and subscribe button so you can find out what happens further on in the book. Bye-bye.